We've got a, a Systemology client who's used this strategy extremely effectively from the free, freelancer technique through to the idea of building a virtual bench. Um, we'll, we'll talk to uh, Tim Colzer from Equibrand and, and he can tell us a little bit about his experience and how he's used it to scale his marketing agency. So let me just stop the share here for a moment. And then Tim, I can see you're there. If you're able to unmute yourself, maybe you can just introduce yourself and, and just, uh, yeah, speak to this particular technique and how it's working for you. Sure. Yeah. My name is Tim Kelzer. I'm the president and owner of Equibrand Consulting. We're a marketing strategy company out of the Bay Area in um, San Francisco, just outside of San Francisco. We've uh, been around about 20 years. Um, I started the firm um, after having left a couple of other firms at the height of the dot-com crash. I was in a job for about a year and out of, out of necessity, I was on my own and needed to start a company. Um, and at the time, um, it was myself and a little bit of help from my wife who also worked in the business, but we didn't have a firm. We didn't have any employees, but we knew how important it was to establish ourselves credibly in the marketplace. Um, and so we in invented the company, Equibrand Consulting. We took bits and pieces of work that we had done for other companies. We kind of brought them all together. So this is our set of offerings. And we had nothing at the time, but we knew we needed a website. And at the time, the whole impression was we want to give the impression, even though we're a startup, we want to give the impression we're a firm of over 100 people. We didn't want to certainly lie, but we want to give the the, the assembly and the image of, a, of an established company. So um, we started out by writing a website. And then we had the idea, and this is again over 20 years ago, is to start what we call the Equibrand growth engine. And the idea was to capture emails, you know, do a little bit of content. I mean, this is all before this is kind of acceptable because I'm, I'm kind of a process guy. I was talking to David a little bit about this the other day. I had, I had a process mentality. I said, if we can put all these pieces together, we can create this growth engine and send out emails and get leads and build the, build the business and scale and stratify the, the client um, segments. And I created a wonderful system and it just sat there. Um, I had real trouble kind of pulling, pulling the trigger. Um, and so that was kind of frustrating because I built this tremendous system, but we never got around to actually sending the emails or making the phone calls. It's part of the, the challenge, I guess, with being an introverted marketer, you know, you don't, you're a little bit reluctant to um, to get in people's face, but I knew I needed to do it. But again, I, I just kind of lingered. And and so for so many years, um, we had a great message, but we didn't we didn't undertake what was required. Um, and then I started to hire on a couple of folks. Um, I, it was just the two of us. And we started to hire a couple of professionals and I hired which I thought were great people. Um, and they were they were great people, but they weren't self-starters. I kind of assumed everybody was like me. If, if you're giving somebody a task, they're going to find a way to do it. And that just wasn't the case. And it took me some time to figure that out. And so I got rid of those two. They left. I hired another one. And the same thing. And I thought, well, this just can't be done. And the reality was I, I, I was, maybe wasn't hiring the right people, but I really wasn't teaching them how to do things. And I wasn't really, you know, breaking things down and, and kind of tasks that, that were manageable. So I learned. Uh, and so for about 15 years or so, I kind of stopped and I said, I can't, I have to do this myself. And it's the same, the same story that, that we heard earlier from that. It's like, um, and then I started to, I, I ended up writing a book called Upstream Marketing, where I did a lot of profiling of best, best practice companies and said, you know what, you don't have to take all this off in one, one fell swoop. You can just do kind of a test and learn process. So I started hiring along the way. I think I've heard like six or six to eight different folks and individuals on Upwork, the same system that David used and kind of a similar process. Uh, but since we've been doing this in a more, I guess, regimented process, we've we've hired um, people for pay-per-click. We'd hire for SEO. We did. We hired somebody for blogging to take our book and put it into blogs. We've done some creative development uh, test, uh, you know, uh, graphics and images and so forth. And we also had a, we hired a book editor to do um, some of the editing of the, of the initial drafts of the book. And the process that, that David mentioned is exactly the process that we went through. And, and some of the things he and I talked about the other day were, were very, we, I liked how we call it freelancer. We never thought to use the term freelancer, but that's exactly the same process that we use. Whenever we hire somebody that we thought we would hope it would be a long-term, more meaningful relationship, 
we wouldn't just hire one person. We always overinvest a little bit. We wanted to hire usually three people for the same task. So when he, when we did the book editing, for example, we had three people re, re-edit chapter one, knowing that we were going to pick the best and then use them for the subsequent nine or 10 chapters. So that process of, of kind of testing and learning um, and um, exposing a little bit of work and then hoping to find those that you can work with and for some time, that's ended up happening. Occasionally something will happen. We actually hired somebody from Russia before the, the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And so we, the Ukraine shut, or Upwork shut down the, those contacts, but, but it's been working really well. And it's a great way to to offload certain tasks that only I felt I could do, but that's not the case. So now what I try to do whenever I have tasks kind of, kind of come across my plate, it's, am I the only one that can do this, yes or no? If, it, if that is the case, then I'll do it. But if not, then I'll look to, to offload that to a virtual assistant or some some other um, resource through, through Upwork or other services. Yeah, perfect. Appreciate the insight there, Tim, and a little bit of validation the more that i can kind of show other business owners that others are doing this this is really accessible and um the idea that you came from the background that you did and you kind of stalled on it and then this really has been one of the huge leg ups for you as far as launching this new business to have access to high quality talent that don't just necessarily sit on the payroll and then you can have them there when you need them I think, um, I mean, there's a huge lesson in that. I hope you enjoyed that clip. Just a heads up, it was a snippet taken from the Business Systems Accelerator Program, which is the world's first training for systems champions to help you build a systems-driven organization. If you'd like to find out more about the program, head over to systemology.com forward slash BSA, and I'll see you in the next video.